This is one of my first Q&A videos and um, I haven't recorded in a actually some time in a few weeks now and back in May I have posted uh, questions to ask my audience both on YouTube on Instagram any questions any issues that maybe you guys are having uh, and there are a lot of questions that I want to answer I want to go over uh, I would like to start first with the questions that I got on YouTube uh, in my uh, community post that I posted and shared uh, and then of course uh, we're gonna go into the Instagram as well. So honestly, it's been, you know, I would say fun as well to take a little break from YouTube and just to analyze what I have been doing. Uh, thank you so much for all your support on the last video with the Borislav. I definitely enjoyed the format a lot and I think this can be um, potentially interested to do more of those. So hopefully I will have some, you know, future episodes. I do plan to have them with other people and uh, eventually we can see where, uh, where this could take. So a few things that I want to start. So we're going to start first with the YouTube. I'm going to go answer it as, as much as I can. Um, hopefully we're going to cover all the questions. Uh, and then, you know, if you guys have any follow up questions, you can feel free to leave in the comments. So let's go to the YouTube. And the first question I got, um, thank you so much for the opportunity. I'm an ebook ghost writer just started out on Fiverr. I would like to ask for your advice, how to get my first three orders. I have made an effort niche down, but I'm competing with only a few sellers. I noticed that takes a lot of time to Fiverr to send the traffic first orders these days and I can sell a bit quite unpredictable uh, first client, especially when you're just starting out, even after optimizing geeks all were moreover, I have noticed that it can be difficult for people to work with someone from my country, even though we are genuine and looking to offer value without reviews. Please be kind to advice. Uh, great question. Thank you so much for bringing this up. I would say when you're starting out on Fiverr, you need to understand that these days um, when you're just starting on Fiverr, it's not enough to just be on Fiverr. So when you're starting on Fiverr, create your LinkedIn profile as well. Um, showcase your skills, showcase, you know, what you do. Um, eventually you will have in your LinkedIn, you know, experience, the education, maybe some experience. You can include all of that there. So think about this Fiverr and LinkedIn is the way of they can work together well. So when you will start to get your first orders, you can establish communication either on Fiverr. So for example, if you have some people messaging you, you can do something for quite cheap price at the beginning just to get those initial orders and then on LinkedIn for example if you build if you create content around what you do and showcase what you are good with people are going to be messaging you and becoming interested in your services so what you can do is you can offer them the same like a relatively cheap price and get those initial first reviews uh, and then after that that's why you have to need to have a, a LinkedIn you know profile because this can be a potential source of uh, traffic for you potential source of orders when you create content around what you do you know Instagram is also good but you need to create videos if you're not comfortable if you enjoy doing more like ghost writing and writing I think LinkedIn can be a great platform for for you to achieve that uh, let's go to the next question so we have thank you for the opportunity um, my question is how to get my first client how to improve my social media marketing skills so regarding the social media marketing skills I, I feel YouTube is enough uh, you know, to go out there and to sh explore what other people are doing, how they're doing things. You have a lot of long videos on YouTube where people are running their Facebook ads and they're showing you like exactly in detail how you can do that. So I feel YouTube will have enough information. Udemy is also a great place, but the problem with Udemy is that the courses, they're not always get updated as often as YouTube. YouTube, you might see some people are sharing, you know, weekly videos every other days, maybe on a monthly basis. So it gets updated a bit much more often. Uh, how to get my first, uh, how to get your first client the same as the previous question I would start with both you know having your LinkedIn profile having your Fiverr trying to you know making sure you optimize your profile well uh, and then making sure you can maybe reach to someone in your circle um, right and then maybe you can you know create some special offer for them and you can do work for them maybe it's even it's your family member maybe they need help with design or maybe with some marketing and they can order your service on Fiverr or maybe some front close you know let's say I don't know colleagues or friends that you know who might need your service and you can do this like a test uh, first orders with them and you obviously need to deliver the work but still this can be an initial push for your traffic how can I get clients to write tweets and Instagram caption for um, actually 
This is a good question. Uh, I will show you this uh, recently. I found um, this agency and uh, um, let me just show you here. They are doing Twitter and LinkedIn growth. Um, let me just find here, Twitter, the birds, maybe it's birds house. Let's see, Twitter agency. Um, let's see, the bird house, so I think that should be it, yeah. So, um, so you can see that they're focusing on uh, Twitter, on LinkedIn primarily, so they're creating content uh, for clients on those platforms, and you know, it's been working really well for them. I've seen the founder, uh, they, they're, you know, their YouTube interview as well, and he's been ex exploring and telling about his journey. So I think it definitely has a potential when you add, um, you know, when you create gigs like that. So, um, you know, I would suggest to do it both on Fiverr and off Fiverr and see how, how it will perform. But you need to market yourself well. You need to show that this works. You know, you need to showcase proof of concept, case studies. You need to be able, and you need to trust in this service, you know, because for example, I probably can do the same, but I just don't have, you know, the whole like systems in place or I'm not very present on LinkedIn myself. I would like to improve that, but you know, I think this is a great idea to start something like they started as well. And you can do this as well on Fiverr, both on Fiverr or, or Fiverr too. So let's go for next one. What services gigs can we can offer if Instagram followers growth service is, is not getting orders? I feel like the Instagram growth service is gonna be always having demand in clients, uh, especially now with the shifts in the changes in the industry. So it will always have a demand, but you need to market yourself well. What I did before in 2020, I used to uh, just go on my Instagram and I would say I have some presence on Instagram. So it's not just like a fake profile and I was reaching out to people. Uh, I was just finding them on Instagram. I made a list on Google Sheets and I was just reaching out to them and offering like the free trial so that I can work on their accounts. Uh, yes, it's gonna be harder because they don't, probably don't wanna give you uh, the password, right? So that's why you need to brand yourself as a professional, as an expert so they can trust you. Uh, and you can do this on Fiverr, you can do this on, on your Instagram and then reach out to people, offer them some trial. Uh, when, they, when they come to you and they accept the trial, ma make sure you ask them maybe to do like a video testimonial so you can have some uh, some you know presence uh, and you can have some credibility as well okay let's go for the next one uh, we have quite a good number of questions so I'll try my best to answer uh, how I should structure agreements with clients what essential elements should be included um, it's totally up to you whatever you you provide for example uh, we have two services we do growth and uh, content so for both services we give some sort of a promise promise to the clients that, for example, in the growth that they can expect between this number of followers and that number of followers. So we give them the range. So that can be between like one to 300 followers that they can get in a month. Uh, of course, we tell them it depends on their content, depends on their account, but this is possible. And we usually, I would say in almost every single case we reached 100 people. If we don't reach 100 people, we'll be happy to extend, uh, we'll be happy to offer some more um, advice and help what they can do to improve their content so that it can help us as well. So you need to, you need to be very clear in, the, in your gigs, uh, you need to be very clear in your communication what you're promising. So I would suggest to create like a shortcut and you can write down exactly what you do, what you offer and what they can expect from you as well. So there will be no question. And for content, we tell them that we create content with their branding, like with their colors, with their uh, you know educational content, promotional content, like we give them what we're gonna do. Uh, and th then we give them the num number of posts that we're gonna create. And we just basically keep, uh, you know, full we fulfill this what we promise as a beginner what factors should i consider when setting setting up my pricing so probably it's going to be a lower price you're going to set at the beginning i mean you know you can go as low as five dollars on fiverr but i wouldn't keep low price for a long time once you get those first initial orders and they might not be fun because you you'll see clients who are paying low 
uh, they usually are more challenging clients, more uh, demanding clients. So I would suggest not to stay with the low price, increase your price. And okay, you might get less orders, but at least you're gonna attract people who you will enjoy working with. So that's gonna be a much better situation. What strategies can I implement to attract and retain recurring clients? Um, definitely communication. You need to be on top of your communication. You need to be friendly. You need to make them feel comfortable with you. They need to make them feel uh, confident as well in the results uh, and definitely reaching out to them again. So for example, once you finish campaign, uh, you can reach out to them say, hey, uh, you know, would you be interested to do another three months? Uh, Fiverr gives you those sort of like a follow-up messages and other things, coupons, which can re-engage those clients. But you can also message uh, yourself, just, you know, being nice, not spammy, you know, anything like that, because Fiverr doesn't like that. So just be careful with that. But yes, definitely reaching out to them again, because many times clients, they want to continue, but they just forget, they're busy, they have other things. So this is definitely normal. For me, for example, I do like to use some services as well. But then, for example, I forget. Uh, and uh, essentially, when someone reached out to me again, I was like, okay, let's do it again. So I'm, I'm you know, always happy. The same with the buyers, you know, they're just uh, busy. But when you remind them, they'll be happy to do it again. Is it advisable to rely on Fiverr in the long term or should I focus my transition clients to my own portfolio website for sustainability? Um, honestly, it depends on you. So for me, I try to keep everything on Fiverr because it's easier for me, for my team, from a communication standpoint. I did have an experience uh, and I do have, I'm also working with clients directly uh, and it's a totally different experience. You know, uh, on Fiverr things, sometimes I, I like it more the way how the communication is structured, the way that everything is in one place structured, the way that I have my team members as well that have access to Fiverr and you know, if anything happens, like they see the orders, they see what they need to do as well, the information as well that the buyer provides to us. So it's everything in one place. I would say for scalability, probably Fiverr will be better if you're even just getting started because you don't need to think about too many systems and how you're gonna structure things. Uh, and it's gonna have an, a snowball effect, meaning that once you're doing well, once you're having reviews, then you your Fiverr account is gonna grow as well. So it's gonna be a, a little bit easier for you. Okay, let's go for the next one. My question is, in your opinion, what's the fastest way of ranking getting my first client on Fiverr? Um, you know, it depends. You might get lucky. Some people are got lucky. They got this initial momentum, then it started to grow fast. Uh, but I would say you need to optimize your Instagram page. Uh, you need to make sure everything looks there, gigs, pictures, videos, description, FAQ, everything is professional and you need to give some time because, you know, essentially the algorithm is going to push you a little bit. You're going to get some initial messages from buyers and then someone's going to decide to place an order. So it takes time. It can be a week, it can be two weeks, three weeks, one month, can be longer. Uh, for me, I think it took me about three weeks to get my first client on Fiverr. Um, I don't remember exactly, but about three weeks. So it, it definitely happened, not straight away. I was late in some of my orders, which enabled the clients to cancel rate me one star. Since then, my gig hasn't been getting more impressions and the rating isn't, isn't going up. Uh, so yeah, I mean, of course, it, you have pressure when you're doing this. But I will suggest, I mean, Fiverr does keep like you have this 60 days, you know, that the cancellation affects you and things like that. So don't worry, try to learn from your mistakes, try to do better. And, you know, hopefully your rating is going to go up. So there's nothing you can do. It's just being, you know, disciplined, being on top of your work, being, you know, careful as well with these things. And essentially things will go um, in, a, in, a good, in a good direction for you. How can I promote my service on Fiverr and social media? Hope you can choose my question. Yes, of course. Thanks for your question. Um, very simple, you know, you have you need to understand what platforms you enjoy. Do you like Instagram? Do you like TikTok? Do you like uh, LinkedIn as well? Uh, or do you, you know, like YouTube, X, you know, Twitter? So just pick one platform and start to write about all of your, uh, you know, all of your, let's say, experience, results, things that you're learning as well. I, I feel LinkedIn is a great platform because uh, you can attract good buyers, a lot of good buyers. Instagram can be good as well, but you need to be comfortable creating videos, reels, you know, things like that. So, you know, both can work, depends what you enjoy. Just pick one platform and um, and start to write about the valuable things. You need to be consistent. You know, the same with this YouTube thing as well. You know, as, as, as soon as you become inconsistent, uh, you know, it's, things are not gonna move. You need to be consistent there. 
Some Fiverr sellers lost their promoter gigs option after they're using it. Do you know why? I think Fiverr does look at your at your gig uh, performance, how many orders you got in the last 30 days, how many orders you delivered. If it's a really small number, they don't want you to go like in a big depth, you know? So um, that's why they have some measures. I don't know exactly which ones, but I assume they look at your volume as well so that they know that, okay, you're getting some orders so that you can pay back the, the promoted gigs uh, balance that you will be getting, you know, that you owe to Fiverr. So uh, I, I feel it's just, you know, it's just their metrics. They have some metrics that they analyze and see. And then essentially, you know, if you're not getting enough traction, it doesn't maybe make much sense to spend all the time on the promoted gigs. Could you tell us uh, how how one can have Fiverr agency account, what is procedures to follow. So uh, honestly, I would not maybe recommend to have Fiverr agency account because unless you're like established, you have a team, you have like processes, I think Fiverr agency is good for people who have established their agency outside of Fiverr. And they come to Fiverr, they can showcase their team because when you have your Fiverr agency account, you need to have, uh, I think it's a, like a requirement to have this like a 15 minute calls that people can book at any time. So it can create some extra pressure, stress. And um, I, in my case, from what I've heard people, you know, being, being an agency, uh, it just doesn't really have that much positive things yet, advantages versus the normal seller profile. So uh, maybe just, you know, if, if you're really established in, in, as, a, as an agency, yes, maybe it can be good. But if you're not, then just go with a normal, normal profile. Uh, should we pay for initial reviews on our gig? I will definitely suggest to not do that, not be engaged with uh, any Facebook groups or anything like that, because, uh, you know, essentially you're putting yourself at risk. So just don't do any of those things. Please create video, uh, video free Fiverr gig marketing. I'm gonna work on some videos like that probably more in July uh, and I'll have some more like in-depth trainings. So that's definitely coming, that's on my list as well. Let's go for, oh, we have a few more. If you were to start from scratch, how would you proceed? Uh, nice question and thank you for asking that. So I would suggest, I, I would say that I will definitely start it on Fiverr, why not? Because it's, it's growing, it's different, it uh, has more buyers than before. So I will definitely start, but I will start with the same, the same as I started on Fiverr, I will start it like on LinkedIn or Instagram or somewhere and just, you know, continue to build my brand outside, my personal brand. And somehow make it that, you know, let's say someone comes to your Instagram, they're like, oh, okay, you know, you have a service on Fiverr or someone comes to your Fiverr account, maybe they'll organically find you easily on Instagram because a lot of times it's like, a, it's like a, you know, I don't know, snowball effect or just, you know, people who find me on Fiverr, sometimes they'll reach out to me on Instagram, you know, and then I will just push them again to Fiverr, you know, that's, that's pretty much it. But like this, they maybe see that, you know, I have some presence, I'm not just like a scam or something like that. So they're, they trust me maybe more initially. You have a lot of subscribers who are working as Instagram growth expert on Fiverr. Since the Instagram has been updated, we have been facing a lot of issues, as you know, as you know everything. So please give us a solution. Yes, Instagram growth industry is is uh, it's always a tricky one, and uh, I'm I've been there for a long time. What I can say, I definitely have my own sort of you know um, systems and things that you know I've been able to establish over the several years. Uh, I mean, it's still possible to grow, you know, using, you know, different things, but uh, the limits are, are stricter as well. So right now you, you can follow maybe like 50 people per day, you know, unfollow about 50 people per day. Every account is different. Uh, Instagram also looks at devices. You know, if you're using one device, one smartphone with too many, uh, too many accounts, you might get uh, essentially like a device block, right? So there is a lot of factors. Like if you want to do this, um, I would suggest, I mean, you need to do this on your phone, on smartphones, you need to have maybe multiple smartphones as well, you need to uh, be able to, you know, have way that you, you have your schedule, for example, you're doing the follows, you're doing unfollows, you're liking content. So um, I might work on some, making some also training about that, but I would say it's still possible. You need to, you know, respect the limits of Instagram. Right now you can follow 50 people per day and follow 50 people per day. You can like about four or five 
up, up to I will say 600 pictures per day uh, you can like 100 stories per day it's not a problem and uh, and all the interaction should be on the phone right uh, if the accounts is been legacy verified meaning that it's been verified before 2023 um, March 2023 I think yes and you can also do some cool things like before you know like running some higher limits and things like that it's possible because those accounts who have been legacy verified not meta verified they have more immune as well so it's it's going to be it's possible for sure it's, it's definitely possible what should we do if our profile gigs not getting ranked consistently a six to eight months i have updated um agent everything according to suggestions of person signed by Fiverr using their seller plus service but nothing worked and finally the person signed by Fiverr said that that's what he could do and he can give only suggestions nothing is guaranteed so what's the point of that person or that service what should we do uh, yes it's tricky for sure and uh, those uh, customer success managers I mean, it's a tricky part because they can definitely see some things uh, that we cannot cannot see. But you know, there is no secrets in the algorithm because the algorithm looks at your views, it looks at your volume. Like right? you know, you need to understand that you need to find ways that you can bring traffic outside of. Uh, from outside to Fiverr. If you can have some consistent flow of that traffic, uh, you will eventually be successful in Fiverr. You can see other sellers, you know, I don't see like once you have that consistent traffic, I don't see like a big drop then, you know. Um, so you need to find this sort of like bringing people from outside to Fiverr and uh, regarding the customer success, I, I, I found it just, you know, accept what they're saying to you you know they're not gonna say to you like oh you know you need to make this trick you know they're not gonna say that but build a relationship with that person meaning that you know appreciate their uh, suggestions say thank you maybe you know j just be nice be kind and i think in any uh, sort of organization or company or community when you're building that sort of relationship and communication you know you can have uh, i don't know not like friendship but at least you can build something that can be uh, maybe useful for you in the future right when something can happen or you know just you have that sort of uh, understanding between each other and that person obviously he wants uh, or she they want a success in your journey like they want to see a successful seller they don't want to see someone who's like complaining all the time or saying like oh this is not working what else can you suggest they don't going to suggest you something that you don't know you know the platform the best they know the platform well but you might know more than they do but they can see more than you do you know so it's a bit tricky uh, on that note but i i found it extreme i have my customer success manager been for many years and you know i'm really thankful for everything he's doing uh you know guiding me suggesting opening new gigs you know changing maybe doing you know other things and etc so i always get i'm sure you're getting the same like we're not i'm not getting something that you don't know so you know it's it's definitely useful uh, but you need to understand that there are other factors that play around in terms of ranking your gigs and getting that consistency thank you for your comment thank you for your support as well on this channel and uh, let's go for the last question so can we depend on fiverr only if no so kindly let me know let me know how we can adjust the number of orders while our gig are derank how much time takes to grow an instagram account to 1k followers if we publish one post today uh we can definitely you can definitely rely people are making you know 10k 5k 20k 30k you can see my channel i've been making let's say from 25k to 45k per month on fiverr depending on you know month and uh, other factors uh, i know sellers who are making 40k 50k uh, 100k plus per month so it's definitely possible right you need to understand we don't have a lot of time during the day so if you're doing multiple things all the time you're not as productive as where you're focused on just one thing so just focusing on fiverr and trying to grow it as much as possible yes there are risks for sure but it also can be uh, productive and you can grow uh, and build a good business from that uh, how much time it takes to grow to 1k followers depends on your niche depends on what you're doing so if you're creating reels consistently you need to give yourself at least three months because it takes for the algorithm to learn what you're doing and it takes about three months to start pushing you so it can take you know three months can take six months depending on how the content is going to perform some people start they're just posting reels and they are able to do really really well and really really successfully as well 
Okay, so we are done with this, uh, with the YouTube com comments um, and uh, now we have also Instagram as well and we can go over, I have um, actually I think more questions there, but you know, bear with me, uh, I will try to make this as well, um, break it into the, into the time, so you're probably seeing the time codes. So let's go and see what we have on the, on the here. So I'm just gonna also record uh, my screen so I can just answer it hopefully productive. So let's start with the Instagram. So here we have the first one um, A new freelancer on Fiverr. What should they focus on to get clients? Depending on your service depending on your niche. What are you trying to do where you want to uh, you know Where are you seeing yourself? But I would suggest social media marketing has a big demand Consulting has a big demand. You know, people are offering consulting sessions, consulting services. This has definitely big demand. Website development, SEO definitely has a demand. Uh, you can do also design services. Design services can be can be powerful. But I would suggest to go into social media marketing. I would suggest to do consulting as well because for sure, like you know, if you're already doing something, doing consulting is not going to hurt you. And if you get extra clients, just extra revenue, extra connections. And maybe you can also charge them like on a monthly basis and do like a once a week or once a month sessions as well. Okay, so let's go for next one. How do you send out your client reports? What do you pay attention to? So when I send client reports, we do have our own reporting where we provide exactly what they do um, and you know what provides what sort of actions we make. I do also like um, just a tip for you. I like to use sometimes Allstat. This is a great analytics platform. You can also like white label it and you know it has a lot of great options, great great ways for you know to show to the clients. So this is definitely this definitely useful and valuable as well. Let's go for next one. Um, here, so uh, there's a question in Russian, but I will translate how you can increase your revenue by two, four times. Uh, right now, you're probably at the ceiling. It all depends, you know, how to say like the algorithm can reward you, but it depends on your service. Like if your service is recurring, yes, you can definitely do that. If your service is a one-time service, it has a low value, it's going to be hard. So you need to think about the service that you can provide as a recurring service and also service that you are charging, you know, higher ticket, you know, maybe you're charging 150 per month for $200 or $300, then you can definitely grow. And the second thing is building your social media presence as well that can help drive that traffic to your Fiverr gigs as well. How to automation Fiverr chat system. So uh, if I understood correctly, I mean, there is you can do this like a first question, uh, first uh, message uh, automated with Fiverr, but I don't like it. I don't like how it looks. I don't like how it, it's, you know, how it's done. So um, I will suggest to just, you know, don't worry about automation so much. Try to be as fast as you can to reply to those first messages and also create a quick responses. So like you can have a quick responses and if anytime people, because for me, for example, I have quick responses for multiple things, for my service, for my growth service, for my content service. So whenever I see that I can help them with the growth or content, I do send my quick response there. Let's go for next one. How to Fiverr chat without giving Fiverr password. Uh, it's a bit tricky. Uh, to do that and uh, you essentially need to have someone who can access your messages. So there's there, there are some ways, but it's better to just, you know, have someone you trust, build that sort of uh, trustworthy relationship with your team member and your team member can be answering your uh, Fiverr inbox messages. Okay, how to solve the flagged accounts by mistake due to the new level system. So, um, it depends like if you got uh, warnings, uh, for example, unfortunately, I don't think it can go away unless you can show that you're not, uh, you haven't done this on purpose, the warning. But, um, but honestly, you know, it's just, let's say if you lose your level, it can solve with the time. So you need to have some time pass, you need to do well in your, um, you know, in your orders, deliveries, and, you know, essentially you can, you can improve the situation there. Let's go for next one. What should I focus if I open a content design Fiverr gig? I think social media marketing, social media posts, Instagram posts, Twitter, X, LinkedIn, Facebook, Pinterest, 
those are the platform I will suggest to focus on for content creation and content design. Okay, so DM what, who I can achieve the level one seller easily. It takes time, you know, you build momentum, you build your first initial orders, reviews, and you can definitely reach it. I mean, it's not something that it's um, hard. You set a goal and you, you reach it within a time. How to become a marketing champion? Uh, you know, I think it's building a personal brand. You need to build some personal brand. You need to build, you need to be consistent, you know, and you need to find the format you're going to enjoy creating because you should not force yourself to create some content or something. You should enjoy creating this content. Like it can be something different, but if you enjoy, potentially this can work really, really well for you. Okay, so next one, how do I decide on a price for my services, social media for local businesses? You need to test because I do run, I have an Instagram page for local uh, community as well and we do work with clients locally and it's all about testing. So like we put different pricing uh, for packages and we see what people choose for. You know, we see that they're not able to pay a lot. You know, we have, um, I have a local community in Spain and we see that they're not able to pay, let's say, thousand, thousands of dollars, thousands of euros, right? So they're more comfortable with paying like 150, 200, 300, you know, this sort of pricing. So you need to test, uh, you know, to be able. So just give some sort of um, packages, maybe two, three packages and see what your client's gonna offer, uh, choose. If they're gonna choose the lowest one, then you need to probably readjust the pricing. If they're gonna choose the medium, the highest, that means you're doing well and you can maybe incre increase the prices even more. Okay, so let's go um, next one. What about paying taxes if just starting on Fiverr? Some general advice. Um, it, it all depends where which country you're located uh, because when you're making money on Fiverr, uh, you essentially have them in the Fiverr balance and then you can withdraw this to your PayPal, to your Payoneer, right? And then you need to connect those PayPal Payoneer to your, let's say, a company or, you know, you need to properly structure it. But at the beginning, it's probably not going to hurt you as much. Again, I'm not... Uh, uh, you know, no, the tax specialist, it depends on your country, but, you know, please take my advice as just, you know, as like, a, not a suggestion, but just as my, um, I don't know, experience or, you know, thoughts. Um, so I'm not an expert in the, in this, but um, when you have your initial money, you know, you can withdraw to PayPal to pay in here, right? But then when the money comes to your bank account, you need to be responsible for taxes, right? Of course, every country is different. Maybe some countries are, uh, I don't know, they don't have as advanced, uh, you know, systems to track things and to control things. But again, it's not my suggestion, but it's better to just go to the tax uh, attorney, uh, tax lawyer in your country, you know, ask their advice. But with Fiverr, you can withdraw to the pay PayPal or Payoneer. That's the options you have. Okay, so where's the best place to mark Fiverr gigs. So again, I think, you know, you have potential with LinkedIn, you have potential with YouTube, you need to find the format that you're enjoying doing. So if you enjoy doing the videos like this, YouTube is a great place. If you enjoy writing, LinkedIn is a great place. So it's all about what you enjoy. I will also suggest you to consider uh, starting uh, a newsletter. For example, you can start your own newsletter. I do have my newsletter link in the description. Um, I need to do a better job with being consistent there, but you know, it's, it's life, we're all humans, we cannot be best at everything. So, but this is a great place, Substack is a great newsletter platform, you can start your Substack, bring people to the Substack, and then from Substack you can bring them to Fiverr, to other places, so that can work uh, really well. Okay, so what advice would you just give Lance just starting on in content creation on Fiverr? Uh, I think it's a good niche for social media marketing. Just try to be uh, different than others. Try to not use uh, template, template content all the time, you know, uh, because you can have different templates. The clients want something unique. They want to have something interesting. Try to have interesting topics as well. Try to have interesting ideas for posts for clients. So like, come up with something unique. Uh, and clients, they want to know that you're an expert in this niche. So try to be uh, an expert in certain niche so that they reach out to you, for example, from health and wellness. And you can say, yes, I have worked with several clients and this is my case studies. This is how I can help you as well. Okay, so let's go. Next one, what is the best way to keep my fire gigs at the top of the fire page? To, an to answer it simply, it's all about those recurring 
orders flow of orders that coming to you on the daily basis on the weekly basis because fiverr looks at this they, they see that the gig is getting popular um, people are buying your gig so they're going to be pushing your gig more to the top okay so let's go to the next one we all know we need to receive you grow fiverr account did you recommend buying review uh no don't buy any reviews go it organically i never bought any reviews you can ask your friends to order your service but you need to provide them the service it's not like you provide them this just empty delivery so make sure you deliver the order as it should be let's go for next one how to scale from 5k to 30k month on fiverr due to competition if we increase rates conversion drop so yes it can be painful i went from uh, you know from 0 to 60k 65k per month back to zero back to 10k 20k 40k 45k so it all depends on your service if your service is recurring and has like a, a you know price point at hundred dollars 150 dollars you know it's a good it you can you can grow but it all depends if you're only relying on one-time buyers where they offer for one once only it's going to be challenging you need to have some traffic sources but some people are are also in some way lucky and they're getting a lot of traffic from that so you need to brand yourself as a professional as an expert and then you'll see you need to be different from others you know because people are they want to work with people they want to work with experts they want to work with a real person behind the fiverr account so you need to differentiate yourself and you need to be professional as well in your profile okay so let's go for next one as a level one seller what action i should take in my free time to effectively grow my be business maybe i will say create content um, about your business about your expertise about your skills and you will be growing your social media presence you will be getting extra benefit from from that as well okay so let's go for next one freelancing on fiverr is a roller coaster how can i have a stable income as a freelancer yes it's a roller coaster but you know you need to I would say I see a lot of sellers are always changing their gigs, their services. You need to just kind of like pick one thing and stick with this and just being super passionate about it. Create content about it, create content on LinkedIn, bring people to Fiverr. You just need to trust in your service. Many times people create and they also like, you know, even they look at my gigs, they're like, oh, I'm going to create content as well. But then I see they have not, no demand because they just do it for the sake of trying just to see if it's going to work or not you need to be really passionate because i started my content service about a year and a half you know also from zero now we have about 40 clients on a monthly basis for content which is good it's growing slowly but you know we're building relationship with clients they're coming back to us and that's how you can grow as well you need to kind of like accept that it's going to take time but you need to be passionate about uh about the service that you're offering okay so let's go for next one i'm struggling on fiverr since one year i'm working on more instagram management it depends on what kind of service let's say if you're doing growth if you're doing other things as well but um you know it's 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 all about how you, you know you need to do a good service so that clients are coming back because i have clients who've been with me for many years so if you're seeing some sort of decline or not maybe you need to change your actual service you know you need to change your the way that you're doing things so i would suggest to to look into this and potentially change the things that you're offering okay how do you deliver projects on fiverr so that you can get referrals and build good relation uh you know multiple things you can do here so um clients usually recommend their friends as well if if i'm doing well the service and i'm trying to over deliver most of the time just to give them something more and also what you can also do you can also say to them hey if you refer someone i'm happy to give you a discount i'm going to give a discount to that person who is going to order and i'm going to give a discount to you and like these buyers will be more motivated to to refer people to you okay so let's go for next one what advice would you give someone in the medical field trying to come back to fiverr i think you can create content um, for clients in the medical niche you know uh, i have cases like you know if you watch my last video with borislav he's been a phd he became fiverr seller also example from my wife mila she's been doctor uh, and she became now a content creation manager she's managing content she's you know managing helping me with the content creation as well so i think it's definitely possible and you know you can do 
maybe websites you can do um, you know create websites for health and wellness for medical for pharmaceutical um, you know companies and there is a lot of potential there if you're good at medical and you know well things um, I think you can open up gigs specifically for this niche and that can do really well on Fiverr how much time it takes for a beginner to sign his first client depends I would say can be up to three weeks four weeks depends how you structure if you follow my course uh, link in description as well uh, you can you know you can optimize your profile well and you can expect your first client probably in the first month I would say so that's definitely the, the possibility okay what is the most valuable lesson you learn in your career related to social media and freelancing um, I learned that you don't need to rush things and you need to say no a lot of times because if you um, a lot of times when I started I was just kind of like okay let me accept this opportunity this opportunity that opportunity and my put my, I put myself in a different difficult position where I had to do things that I didn't really enjoy and I had to force myself and the result was not as good so I would say being selective it's fine to go slower as you would you know not maybe accept a lot of things that but just enjoy the process enjoy the process and find opportunities that you feel you can contribute the most like if you find let's say if your clients come to you like oh i want to do this and you feel this is completely a different direction that you are trying to go with just reject it doesn't need you know it's not going to work okay you can maybe make some money but in the end it's not going to work uh, you know that effort or the time you put in you know if you're not really enjoying their niche or their business or th so try to you know say more no to some things so like this you are um, also protecting yourself from certain things it's fine to say no it's not like you know you have this opportunity and it's a lifetime opportunity you, you will have opportunities in your life I mean I'm saying mostly with clients you know so um, if you're working with clients you can be selective it's fine just pick the ones that you feel has a potential and you enjoy doing regarding your freelancing I would say is just try to focus on something specific and just give yourself some time don't do so many things at once because you might lose focus just pick something that you like you you know see the potential and focus on that give yourself some time to do it and then you can see the outcome uh, what steps should someone take to build personal brand on social media picking the platform for sure Understanding the format, if you like to write content, if you like to film content, if you like to, to take pictures as well, and just go all in on this platform, right? And then try to connect this. For example, let's say if you're present on TikTok and, you know, think about what you can do. For example, if you're doing TikTok, maybe you can do digital products. You can sell digital products, right? Because there's more younger audience. If it's a LinkedIn, probably you're going to be working more like as a service provider you can provide them a service because it's like your client maybe potential client so it's all understanding uh, what platform you like and what content you're going to create and for who you're going to create so you can understand what you can do with, with those people after uh, okay so some tips for growing followers organically on Instagram, let's say, definitely Reels. Reels has a lot of potential. I'm creating a Reels for my other account, for my local community in Spain. We're growing by hundreds of people every single day. Reels are definitely working. This is definitely one of the best ways. But you have an options, uh, and I think you ask the next question, what do you think about the follow and follow? This is another option you can do. You could do it yourself, but it, this takes time. So that's why like, you, know, you, you have services where I have a service um for for that and other people have services and that's why a client comes to us because they want to still see growth because reels is great but it's not for all people some people just don't have time to create it they cannot create it so that's why they look for alternative options and you know following and following liking this is another growth option which is possible and you can still um you know you can still grow uh, quite well i would say using this strategy okay so i see another question should i reach for a collaboration first and how do you how do i know if i'm being catfished by company i would say they will become maybe silent you know you can always reach out to them again and ask their decision but yes definitely reach out uh, for those opportunities yourself 
bring them something like you know if you're reaching out you need to bring them what you can help them with right so you need to definitely do that because they will come to you only when they see a big potential in you for their campaign for their other things but you need to reach out to them first of course okay so what strategy can i can help new freelancers stand out platforms like fiverr so i answered a few times about this but yes optimizing a profile uh, making sure you go as a person on Fiverr, making sure you understand what service you're going to provide to them as well, like to your potential buyers and just being patient, just being patient, give yourself some time. It's not going to happen overnight. You need to spend, uh, wait some time and I think things will will happen um, eventually for, for you. What common mistakes should new online entrepreneurs avoid? Uh, it's hard to avoid mistakes because you will have to go through mistakes so I wouldn't say just don't worry about making mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes. Uh, you know, just make sure, like I answered previously, when you're accepting you, these sort of collaborations or putting yourself in different situations that you are actually, you know, comfortable with this process or you're enjoying this, you're going to enjoy this process, right? So just don't put yourself in a situation that you feel this is not right or I don't like what they're doing or you're not on the same page with the brand or business um, and and things will be fine but it's fine to make mistakes and we all make mistakes I make mistakes all the time uh, well I try to of course you know uh, learn from the mistakes but you know we we cannot control this so we can only learn from mistakes okay so two more questions how do you identify a profitable niche for online business um, it's hard to say, you know, because I know that, of course, you can look at these niches like finance, crypto, uh, you know, business, how to make money. These niches are, you know, they have more profitability than like travel videos, for example. But still, you need to enjoy what you're creating. So I'm creating content about Fiverr because I enjoy, because I'm on Fiverr. Um, and it's uh, somehow it's working for me on YouTube. So just find something you enjoy. Don't worry too much about you know, profitable, not profitable, just find your sort of path. And then from this niche, maybe you can come up with something that is unusual or is not uh, known as well. And you know, you can be uh, very successful there. Okay, last one. How important is a business plan for an online startup and what should it include? It's actually important. You need to understand your financials. You need to understand your team, your structures. So, um, as from remember when I started my agency, you know, I went to my, you know, father and was like, oh, I'm, you know, gonna do this. I'm gonna, you know, grow Instagram accounts. I'm gonna, you know, help other people. And he was saying like, do you have a business plan? And I said no. He's like, okay, you need to have a business plan. I was like, why? But I know my math. I know. He's like, no, you need to have business plans so like this. You know exactly you know, what are you doing, your marketing strategy, your financial strategy, your team, your other things, expenses. And then I sat down and I was actually at the university as well. And I had to create also a business plan. So I created a business plan for this sort of business. Uh, and it was it was helpful, you know, because you never know what um, at what stage maybe you'll need the investment, maybe someone else is going to be asking for a business plan, you know, and you can present them. So I would say this is definitely useful. And you should definitely work on that, you know, as soon as you can, just when you are starting out. All right, guys. So that's about it. Um, that's the old question. So it's been a long video, but hopefully you find it useful. Thank you so much for watching. And let me know in the comments. And please don't forget to subscribe to my newsletter. And stay updated because I have some exciting videos are coming next as well.